In a previous video, I briefly mentioned Lagrangian mechanics without giving much explanation. So today, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into Lagrangian mechanics. So what is Lagrangian mechanics? Well, first of all, what is mechanics? Mechanics is the field of physics that deals with describing the motion of systems. And there are many different types of mechanics you can use depending on the situation, such as Newtonian, Lagrangian, Hamiltonian, and quantum. You're probably most familiar with Newtonian physics, which mainly deals with forces and has a sort of cause and effect approach to solving problems. If you know where an object is and the forces acting upon it at that time, then you can predict its motion. Newtonian mechanics is good for representing simple systems in terms of their most basic elements. But with more complex systems, like a double pendulum, it can be harder to derive the equations of motion. That's where Lagrangian mechanics can be useful. Unlike Newtonian mechanics, Lagrangian mechanics aims to describe an object's motion by considering the whole path at once. Lagrangian mechanics was created when mathematician Joseph Louis Lagrange was looking for some kind of pattern of motion that would generalize to all systems. Lagrange wasn't the first person to think of looking for generalized patterns of motion though. Greek mathematician Heron of Alexandria proposed the idea that light always travels in a path that minimizes the distance from point A to point B. However, this theory doesn't always work, like in the case of refraction. Light doesn't always travel in a straight line, and it changes speed between mediums. During the 1600s, Fermat built upon this idea and proposed that maybe light doesn't travel on the path that minimizes distance, but rather time. Perhaps matter worked in the same way. However, Newton's laws were published a few years later, and it turned out that matter worked differently than light. But perhaps there were some kind of pattern we could take from this. Maybe there were some kind of quantity like time or distance that we could minimize to find a pattern of motion for all systems. Lagrange had the idea of taking the kinetic energy and potential energy and subtracting them to get a quantity known as the Lagrangian. He then considered every possible path an object could take to get from point A to point B. If you choose a certain path and add up the Lagrangian at every single point in that path, you get a value known as the action. Therefore, the action can be represented as the integral over time of the Lagrangian. Lagrange noticed that the path an object will actually take is the path with the smallest total sum of Lagrangians, in other words, the least action. This is the principle of least action. By the way, it's important to note that although it's called the principle of least action, the path doesn't actually have to be the one with that minimized action. Physicist William Rowan Hamilton made this correction later on. Objects choose the path where the variation of action between nearby paths is the smallest. If you graph the integral of the Lagrangian, this happens on points where the slope of the graph is equal to zero. A graph can have a slope of zero at three points, a minimum, a maximum, and saddle points, which are all known as stationary points. So the principle of least action can also be stated as the principle of stationary action, which states that objects will take the path with the smallest variation of action. But that path is often the one with minimum action, so it's still commonly known as the principle of least action. Now let's clear up a common misconception. We say that an object chooses the path with the least action, but how does the object know which path to choose? Well, it doesn't. The object will follow whatever path it will. Lagrangian mechanics is simply a tool or a model that we have created to describe the patterns that we observe in our world. So when would you use Newtonian mechanics or Lagrangian mechanics? Newtonian mechanics is usually better for systems that are very simple or ones that deal with complex forces like friction. Lagrangian mechanics is generally better for more complex systems where it can be hard to keep track of all the different forces. Because it's also more versatile, it can be applied in different fields outside of classical mechanics like general relativity and quantum mechanics. So in the end, Lagrangian mechanics is just another way of describing the motion of systems, relying on energy and visualizing the path as a whole. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.